Good evening, folks. What you're looking at is a comet. It is purported by some that this comet is responsible or is a remnant of the impacting objects that ended the last ice age. What you're looking at is 2P Comet Enki. Photographed the last perihelion back in 2017. March. This comet flies by every 3.3 years and its position changes every year. And it will be back in June of 2020. Comet 2P Enki. It comes so close that we have a picture that is this detailed. We don't want to get it confused with the Sumerian god Enki. E-N-K-I. Different spelling. Different story. Different narrative. But maybe related. Because typically the missing information is being hidden in plain sight. And I'll leave you links to Enki, the Sumerian god of water, knowledge, mischief, and crafts. But it's interesting to note that Comet Enki may be a remnant of the comet responsible for the end of the last ice age. We're talking the huge floods, the biblical floods. And if you look at the Sumerian god Enki, you can see he is the god of water. It's actually pouring out of his shoulders. Um, he appears to be wearing some type of a plasma discharge hat. <laughs> now, what you're looking at is a high-resolution picture of Comet Enki and its multiple plasma tails. These are not ice, as purported by NASA and what you learned in school. This is electrical discharge, and those are Birkeland currents. Each of those lines, it's a swirling electrical current, maybe being uh, excited by the particles on the comet. Now, what we know about Comet Enki, 2P Enki, is that its debris field is known as the Taurids. So whatever the comet was initially has broken up into billions and billions of pieces. And we now watch them re-enter our atmosphere twice a year during November. The South Taurids are what is supposedly the remnants of Enki. And one of our inner planets in the solar system, Mercury, which you're looking at here, often goes through the stream and it gets bombarded. I don't know if you've ever seen the surface of Mercury, but that's a result of Comet Enki. Because it is, we know that it passes regularly through the debris field. And you're seeing a graphic image there. On January 17th, 1786, Pierre Michon searched for comets in the constellation Aquarius and spotted one, which had grown a slight plasma tail. The comet was again observed by Charles Messier on January 23rd, but was not seen again. And what they discovered in 1786 was Comet Enki. Yep, there it is. Now we can, we have technology to see it and its plasma tail. Amazing. Now here's where it gets good. Many people think Comet Enki is a remnant of the objects that hit Earth 12,900 years ago and then 11,500 years ago during the Younger Dryas and the end of the last ice age. Multiple events causing major perturbations to our climate, melting the entire northern hemisphere ice cap in just a matter of decades, causing catastrophe worldwide. And you're looking at a really cheesy graphic of that.
idea. Now, some have taken it even further. Graham Hancock, big fan, and I'm sure a friend of the channel. The comet that smashed Atlantis is on its way back. In fact, his most recent book, this is what he predicts. Comet Enki not only ended the last ice age destroying Atlantis, but it's coming back, and his date is 2030. Whew, look at that. It's hot. Yeah, Graham Hancock. Now the story goes something like this. An ancient Ice Age super civilization was pulverized into oblivion 12,000 years ago. I believe this as well. And this cataclysm was sparked by a comet named Anki. The ragged remnants of this same shattered civilization then set about transmitting warnings through the eons that this comet was set to return, the likes of which in Gobegli Tepe and other areas, the actual information is actually being held from you. And after Graham slew through ancient encoded clues scattered across the surface and subsurface of Earth, he came to the realization that Comet Enki is going to hit our planet in 2030. He says it's going to rip apart and there'll be multiple pieces hitting according to this article. You'll get links to all this below. Now, let's talk about what we do know. Comet Enki or Enki's Comet is a periodic comet that completes an orbit about the sun once every 3.3 years. It was discovered 17th of January, 1786, as we told you. And its next perihelion will be the 25th through the 27th of June in 2020. The 10th of March is when the video footage I showed you on the opening of this video occurred during the last perihelion. Comets are in unstable orbits that evolve over time due to perturbations and not outgassing because they don't outgas. That's insane. It's unfortunate that the mainstream uses that word because it has it's not true. And given Enki's low orbital inclination near the ecliptic and brief orbital period, the orbit of Enki is frequently perturbed by the inner planets. And that's not good news for us because this is a big rock. And if this baby hits us, it'll be a wrap. Now let's talk about some other facts. Comet Enki and Tunguska. On June 17th, 1908, 9 a.m. Russia time, a comet or asteroid exploded above the uninhabited area of Siberia near the Tunguska River. Comet Enki may have been responsible and you can check out that paper, 1978, Journal Astronomical Institutes of Czech, Bulletin, Volume 29. The blast in 1908 leveled 80 million trees covering 830 square miles. This was due to plasma discharge. This object did not hit the surface. An electrical discharge in the form of a Birkeland current went up and vaporized it, but it still had the effect of multiple nuclear bombs being exploded over Earth. That's another scenario we have to look for. Could you imagine a dozen of these objects coming in in the near future? 2020 or 2030, as Hancock says? Can you imagine? They're probably not as big as a planet, so you, you don't have to imagine them that big. But Comet Enki and Tunguska in 1908, we should be worried about that because we're now 110 years later. And it comes back every 3.3 years. Our magnetosphere is waning. Maybe the Earth will suck it towards us. March 10th, 2017 was the last flyby. And we're talking June 25th of 2020 when Comet Enki will return. I will leave you links to the orbital path of Comet Enki as well so you can bone up. Now, the Taurid meteor showers. Go out and look right now. The Taurids are an annual meteor shower associated with the comet Enki. This is the same stream that bombards Mercury and will soon bombard Earth, according to Graham Hancock and others. 
I believe there's a 50% chance that this is one of the elements of the coming cosmic catastrophe on earth that you're going to live. Now the Tards are actually two separate showers, the Southern and Northern component. The Southern Tards originated from Comet Enki, which was originally a bigger comet that broke up, melted the Northern Hemisphere glaciers during the end of the last ice age, causing the biblical flood and destroying Atlantis. While the North Tards originated from another asteroid that we don't care about. Now, they're named after the radiant point in the constellation Taurus, the bull, which sits outside of Wall Street. Are you picking it up? That's a little freaky. What is this? This is, should be good. Boom! Comet Enki. Now, a radiant meteor shower is a meteor shower that comes out of a point like this. And if you can't see that, I'll just blow it up like a boom. And there's the radiant. So there's a point in the night sky and the meteors emanate from it. That point in the night sky for the Taurids is Taurus the Bull. And no bull. If you don't know what Taurus the Bull is, it's a constellation. And it's just a little up and right of Orion. So as Orion rotates over the horizon around 10 p.m. in the northern hemisphere right now in the fall, you just need follow the belt stars over and look directly up. And that's the Taurus the Bull, right there, right above Orion here. So you'll get links to this and just go look at Orion a little up and right. And that's where you will see the Taurids emanating from, as well as the large object that's going to hit Earth and, and the Empire. That's where it'll radiate from, from the radiant of Taurus. Now look up. The Taurid meteor showers could light up your night tonight. Yeah. Could light it up. Mm. Yeah, we just lit it up. There has been a light show in the night skies in the last few days. And last night I went out and in just four minutes, I saw a vertically descending green fireball laser beam from Taurus. Boom! It was awesome. I live in one of the darkest places on the planet, so it's easy for me to see these plasma discharges. But... The Tards are notorious, especially the ones you're going to see peaking the 11th and the 12th of November for fireballs. And these are the green plasma discharge streaks that are brighter than Venus. So they would be the brightest thing in the night sky except for the moon and the sun. And that is extremely bright. <laughs> yeah, not as big as the Death Star hitting Earth bright, but bright. Like, don't look at the sun. Please, but look up. The Tards aren't especially known for producing an abundant amount of fleeting shooting stars like the August Perseids, but they are known for lighting up the planet. Join us on a Tarid lighting up the planet just nights ago, 48 hours ago. That is what a fireball looks like. That is a double Berkling current plasma discharge where it is actually being caught by multiple electron electric fields burning there once and again and again. That's actually three discharges. Watch it go once, second, third. Boom. Boom, boom. Yeah. So those are the three electrical discharges that disintegrated the object and there was no earthquake here. Had that object not disintegrated from electrical discharge, the camera would have shook and there would have been a 4.8 magnitude earthquake here because a rock about two or three feet would have hit the ground at between 18 and 24,000 miles an hour. Yeah, that is pretty fast. It's not like a drag strip. It's like insane in the membrane fast. So you'll get links to this video from a meteor viewed in central Arkansas just last week or yeah, just last this week. And let's talk about, uh, and look up because they're going to be peaking November 11th and 12th into the 13th. So that three-day period. But you can go out and see them tonight because I saw them last night on the 7th. Let's talk about the science and then we'll finish this. We're 14 minutes in. And thanks for joining us 
This is all the information that you can gather from the mainstream in scientific uh, journals. Asteroids in the Targ Complex, the full paper. I'll leave that link for you. And also, meteor observations in Japan. New implications for a Taurid meteor swarm. Say it ain't so. A swarm the size of Death Stars? Pro no, probably the size of grapefruits. But still, that would wreak havoc on the planet. Yeah. And, and so would these big jiffy rocks. So, meteor observations in Japan, new implications for a Taurid meteor swarm. You'll get links to that. Uh, cometary breakup hypothesis re-examine. This is what we just talked about the whole video. A big comet broke up, ended the last ice age, and has been wreaking havoc ever since, and is about to come at, back, kick ass, and take names. Whew, hopefully not ours. And then a paper on the origin of Comet Enki, and the origin of that would be a bigger comet that ended the last ice age. Are you picking it up? Comet collision, collision, the source of ancient myths. That's what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about it at LeakCon 2019. We're going to be continuing to talk about it as long as YouTube is up. The grid exists and this channel exists because that is my specialty. I began studying comet catastrophe, climate catastrophe, uh, orbital perturbations decades ago. And if you want to know about my background in geology and the processional cycle, the great year and cosmic climate catastrophe, come check out this video that I put out a year and a half ago and learn about the great year. Will Comet Enki hit Earth in 2030 according to Graham Hancock? No one knows. But what we do know is that Comet Enki is the Taurids and you can go out and see fragments of it re-entering our atmosphere tonight. And that Comet Enki 2P is going to be at perihelion in June 25th of 2020. And that's not funny. <laughs> but I bet it'll be sunny if you're in the northern hemisphere because it'll be summer will this baby end the empire will it kill 80% of all life on earth because of the 600 foot tsunami it produces are you prepared for every eventuality we love you be safe thanks for watching